Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. All persons having business before the Honorable Supreme Court of the Philippines. An alternative lawyer should be prepared to push for his or her advocacies at all levels. Not only at the grassroots level, but also from within government and even at the highest levels like the Supreme Court. When I appeared as counsel for the Senate of the Philippines uh, in the Neri case, it was important that we, we got involved because uh, essentially for me, uh, there, there is a pattern of concealment being practiced by our government. And the invocation of executive privilege is part of that pattern of secrecy, of non-disclosure of matters of public interest, which the people have a right to know. Because, Your Honor, it will be inconsistent with other competing values like the right to information, the principle of accountability of public officers, the principle of uh, transparency, even uh, the doctrine of separation of powers, Your Honor. Ang piring sa matay sinasabing bulag ang tunay na katarungan at hindi tumitingin sa estado o personal na katangian ni Numan. Pero sa sitwasyon natin sa Pilipinas, maraming Pilipino ang nagsasabing mailap ang konsepto ng katarungan. Ubon ng lakas pa rin kadalasan ang tinig ng kayamanan, kapangyarihan at korupsyon. Upang higit pong magkaroon ng linaw itong ating paksa. Atorney! Carlos Medina, Executive Director, Ateneo Human Rights Center. Kasi sinasabi nga namin dito sa, sa kaso na ni Mary, itong executive privilege, hindi ito maaaring gamitin upang itago ang isang kasalanan. Ang general principle is always in favor of disclosure. Sabihin mo ang katotohanan. Bakit importante ito? Unang-una, meron tayong right to information. Meron tayong mga patakaran sa ating saligang batas na sinasabing transparency, and then accountability of public of officers. Paano magkakaroon ng transparency, accountability of public officers, yung enjoyment of right to information, kung yung tao mismo, hindi nila alam kung anong ginagawa ng mga public servants. Hanggang sa susunod na Sabado, dito pa rin sa programang Sumpuin ang Korupsyon. Masabi mo yung closing, no? Yes. Thank you very much, Muleta. For a long time, my advocacy focused on, on trying to, to influence the institutions of government, uh, the, the different role players in the justice system as an outsider. So I try to do what I can from the outside as a member of the alternative law groups and at the same time from the inside as a member of the Philippine Judicial Academy and a consultant for, for many of these government institutions. And when I, I, and I do this, uh, I do it also as an alternative lawyer. So the primary obligation when it comes to the promotion and protection of human rights is with the state. His training on extrajudicial killing is really part of the initiative of the new Chief Justice to address human rights concerns, particularly extrajudicial killings and enforced disappearances. So what am I doing there? Well, it is an opportunity for me to influence the thinking, the thinking not only of judges but also of prosecutors and police and military personnel and even civil society groups on how to properly and effectively address this uh, situation of extrajudicial killings and enforced disappearances. In our system, it will be through the normal criminal justice system that rights are protected. And that is why, Your Honors, you are at the front line of this effort to promote and protect you. Why don't we, we why don't we invite uh, General Palparan? You know, not that will be at all order. Many civil society organizations will react to a situation of violation uh, and try to address the problem of impunity to hold accountable the violators. That's one way, and it's an important way. And many groups are effective doing it, but. 
Another way is to not only to intervene at the point of the violation, but only but also at the beginning, uh, even before the violation. Yan po talaga ang objective ng Kiera. Kaya sinasabi sa humanitarian law, yung doctrine of proportionality. You must use proportionate force. Halimbawa, ang ginamit mo para patayin ang isang kalaban, bazooka. Kailangan ba bazooka ang gamitin mo? Ah, buhay pa eh. Mayarap na eh. Masa naman yung mayarap na base. Overkill mo. Ang hawak niya hanggang. Ikaw, bazooka. Anong tawag dyan? Overkill. Martyr. I think it's important for groups like us to be involved and to intervene at that point also so that it will uh, lead to uh, government policies and programs which are more uh, directed at effectively promoting and protecting human rights. So, we can summarize the work of the ALGs into three main categories. Social justice, human rights, peace. We are working not only for the government, not only for other people to respect their rights, but also for them, for these marginalized people, to be able to recognize that these are rights that cannot be violated. And that because they have rights that cannot be violated, they should act whenever there are violations. And that they should be able, they should have the ability to work and to work within the legal system so that they can seek the proper remedy for violations of their rights. This is the essence of the work of the alternative law groups. What the law cannot do for them was very clear from that experience. That they had to do that walk. They had to do that historic march. 1,700 kilometer march from Mindanao to Manila. Because the justice system failed them. And they are claiming their rights. They're claiming their rights. They're claiming their, their, their position in the legal system. They're calling our attention. Here, here we are, we are hoping that the legal system will work for us, it did not, and we are calling your attention. You're telling us that the system should work for us, and that the poor can access the legal system. Here we are, we have walked for several kilometers, because we have waited, and until now we are waiting, and nothing has happened. In 2000, the Semilo farmers were brought to prison because they tried to stop the traffic so that government can hear them. A lawyer like me would immediately say, I can file a case in court and bring them out of prison. But that does not help resolve their case. They will still end up being landless. Farmers, for example, are being uh, filed cases uh, on qualified theft, uh, especially tenants. If I answer their case and represent them in court. Tomorrow, I know that another farmer will be filed a case. But, but if I look at the reason why these cases are filed against them, and then realize that there are conflicts between the revised penal code and the, the agrarian reform law, and try to resolve their laws, then I will be winning one million cases for a lot of farmers that I don't even know. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.